We just spent four nights in a suite on the new Margarita Villa Sea Islander cruise ship. And today we're going to tell you if it's worth it to book a suite on Margarita Villa at Sea. What's going on? My name's Jared. Jordan is out booking your cruise vacations. If you want to book your cruise through JJ Cruise, go to jjcruise.com. We are happy to book your upcoming cruise vacation. And we are JJ Cruise. Thank you so much for joining us today. We just got off the brand new Margarita Villa at Sea Islander. I say brand new because it is new to the brand Margarita Villa at Sea, but this is technically an older Costa ship. That's besides the point. We're gonna talk about our experience in a suite, a Grand Terra suite to be exact, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and whether or not you should book a suite on Margarita at Sea, if it was worth it for us, and will it be worth it for you? We'll let you know by the end of this video. But first, we invite you to subscribe to the channel. All we do is talk cruising, travel, cruise news, you name it, any story from the sea, we are here for you. So please subscribe to the channel. It's free to you and means the world to us. And while you're at it, hit that thumbs up. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's start off with the good. First and foremost, right when you walk into your Grand Terrace suite, you see that it's fresh, it's modern, the decor is lovely. It really doesn't feel like an older cruise cabin. It has been renovated to not perfection, but pretty close to it for an older cruise ship. On top of that, you notice right away that it's pretty spacious. Now, this isn't a suite that you get on a luxury cruise ship by any means, but it is a great suite for a budget cruise line like Margaritaville at sea. We could put our luggage under the bed. There are lots of closet space, plenty of places to hang up clothes, although you might need to ask for additional hangers when doing so. And we really found it to be a great space to enjoy our time, even it being just four nights at sea. Something we noticed also right away was the amount of outlets. There are so many outlets and it is a good thing because honestly, outlets are one of those things that are hard to find. And when we talk about outlets, we're not just talking about the outlets for plugging into US or European. There's also USB outlets as well. We do think that this is something that is a really good positive and a good update to what was an older cruise ship that didn't have any of these new modern technology. Uh, so we are really pleased and happy that there are so many outlets in the stateroom. Continuing into the main area, we notice a couple of other things that are unique. One of which being the bar with bar stools. This really fits the vibe of Margaritaville at sea. There's even a branded ice bucket that you can get ice into from your stateroom attendant. It just really adds that level of Margaritaville. We're here to have a good time and a margarita in hand at all times. It's something that we don't always see on other cruise cabins, especially in other cruise cabin suites. But this is something that we really enjoyed seeing in our suite. From that bar or from bed, we could watch what was really a nice size TV. Now, I'm not sure the exact dimensions, but this TV was definitely new. On this class of ship, they had old small TVs in the past. This is definitely an update and a good update for anyone that likes to just chill in the morning, chill at night, watch some TV and enjoy as you fall asleep. We can't talk about the cabin without talking about the good of the bathroom. Now, this bathroom was one that was truly a nice bathroom. And it came with a shower, a tub, a his and his sink, or his and hers, or hers and hers, whatever your preference may be. It also had a heated mirror, so at any time you could steam up that entire bathroom, get out of that shower, and still do a nice shave or get ready in the mirror. The space in the bathroom was fantastic. The water pressure and adjusting shower head to different water levels was really nice as well. All of this to say the bathroom was a pleasant surprise from other bathrooms we've seen on other ships. We really can't talk about the good of getting a suite on Margaritaville at sea without talking about the perks. And the perks may be where it's at the most. Let's start with priority embarkation. Priority embarkation, well, this is something that for us, 
didn't matter as much, but there is a sweets area or priority embarkation area that serves sodas, waters, little sandwiches to eat. It really just gives you that comfort of being able to just chill, wait for the ship, to be ready for you to embark. And then you're supposed to have priority embarkation. Now for our sailing, it was the maiden voyage and it was a little bit messy to be honest, but in the future we do see this to be handled perfectly and something that is a big plus when booking a suite. When it comes to de-embarkation, well, this is where it may be the most important. We had priority de-embarkation. This was done perfectly. You got up in the morning earlier than everyone else. You went to your designated place to get off. And once you got off, well, you got off seamlessly. For others, it took up to two hours to disembark. That is not something I want to do on any day when I get off a cruise ship. So that alone might be a good reason to go ahead and get a suite with these perks. As I mentioned with the dining room, this is another area that we have seen a really good plus for being in a suite. The service is top notch. Your food comes out super hot and fresh. You have a select menu that's on top of what's downstairs in the main dining room, the Finn's main dining room. And it usually comes with a steak, a fish, a chicken option, whatever it may be. There's two options for apps, two additional options for entrees, and an additional dessert option on top of what comes in the Finn's main dining room. And we really found that extra level of service to be the big plus. The fact that there's white tablecloths, the fact that they really do dedicate your time and service to you. And there's such a small weight, if any weight at all, compared to what you would find in the main dining room and Finn's main dining room downstairs. Two other things that we really have liked that we didn't talk about yet is the perk of having a concierge service. You actually have a concierge person that can actually help you in booking or figuring out different issues you may have. That's a huge help because you don't have to go to guest services for any problems you may have on your cruise. And the last thing we didn't talk about were two water bottles every night in your suite waiting for you when you go to bed. We all know dry mouth is the worst thing to go to bed with and you never had it inside a suite on Margarita at Sea. That was the good. Let's go into the bad. And let me tell you, the bad is a mixture of those that were just bad for us as well as things you need to know so you can prepare before going on board into your suite. The first one is storage space when it comes to drawers. If you are someone that uses drawers and almost only drawers, these drawers were tiny. There are a few drawers in the cabin, sure, but they were not the size that they looked like they should be. They were cut off by another segment of the cabinet space, and it definitely left us to have to stack clothes on shelves instead of put them in drawers and push them back away. The next bad thing or thing to know is there's a lack of hooks in the main cabin space. In fact, there are none in the main cabin area. There are a few in the bathroom. Something to note with this is that a lot of the walls are not metal. In fact, the door, the front door is not metal, so you can't hang up your usual magnets for door decor. You really have to have some tape to tape something up there. Well, that same thing comes for metal hooks. If you have magnetic hooks that actually hook to metal, that might be hard to do as well in this cabin. There are a few walls or a few areas in your cabin that could do that, but just know you won't have a lot of options. And if that's something that really matters to you, well, you should just know that is something that is missing from this space. Lastly, the bed, unfortunately, is quite firm. Now, it is a new ship. This will probably be broken in after time, but for our first voyage on the maiden voyage, well, the bed was a little hard and I will say firm more than hard because it wasn't like a rock, but it was something that was not as comfortable as we've seen on other cruise ships, even for their maiden voyages. Once again, we slept fine overall, but it was something that we wish would have been a little softer, a little bit more broken in. Maybe after some time it will be. So that is the bad. What about our ugly? Well, this is something that I have to say was a big disappointment, but one that really didn't matter as much to us than it would to a lot of you at home. And that comes to the balcony. This is a grand terrace suite. This is not a grand suite without any outdoor space, but we haven't mentioned the balcony because the balcony was never renovated. In fact, the balcony was not necessarily an eyesore, but definitely not a space where you'd want to spend a lot of time. And it came for a few reasons. Even though it was a large space, there were only two small chairs 
and a small side table on the entire balcony space. This balcony could have lounge chairs. It could have footstools. It could have a large table to where you could sit and have a meal out there if you wanted to, but they didn't have any of that. It was just two chairs that you had to sit upright in. They weren't very comfortable chairs. There were no footstools. And then you just had this side table to put maybe a couple drinks on at the most. This is something we would expect maybe off of just a regular balcony, but we would not expect it for a suite. We'd expect lounge chairs, footstools, a full table maybe even, and really be comfortable while on your balcony. Now, like I said, for us, it didn't matter as much because we don't use our balcony a ton, but we know a lot of you at home love to spend time in that balcony. And so that's why we need to mention it as our ugly for this Grand Terrace suite. All of this to say that was the good, bad, and ugly, but was it worth it to us? And to be honest with you, it was. The perks were where it is at. I cannot mention this enough. This is a budget cruise line. If you have the expectations of that, of a mainstream cruise line, like that of Royal Caribbean, maybe Carnival or NCL, MSC, you will be disappointed if you do not get yourself a suite or something with more perks added, like one of their chill packages. Why do I say this? Well, with embarkation, de-embarkation, eating in the main dining room, some of these additional perks can be added in that chill package, whether it's faster to chill or one of their ultimate chill packages, but it can also be included just within the suites. And when you get the suite, you get the upgraded room, the upgraded cabin, the vanity space that we didn't even mention earlier. And honestly, I think for the small price difference, it would be worth it just for the perks alone. As you notice, there really wasn't a ton bad with the room. There's really just the balcony that was the main focal point of what we thought could have much improvement. Everything else was very small and minute. So with that to say, would we book a suite again, a Grand Terra suite specifically on Margarita Let's Sea Islander? Absolutely. In fact, we hope to go on Margarita Let's Sea Islander again in the future. And when we do, we'll definitely be looking at all of the suite options. That was our experience on Margarita Villa Sea Islander cruise ship in a Grand Terra suite. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Would you book a suite on Margarita Villa Sea? As a reminder, this is not the same sweet pricing as that of the mainstream lines. You're not spending 10K for a Grand Terra suite. They typically range anywhere from uh, two, $3,000 on up. So it is a little bit more of a comfortable price range for most people that cruise mainstream cruise lines or even premium cruise lines. But with all that to say, let us know your thoughts below. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and until next time, see ya.